<laughs> I like know. Either be hot or cold. Yeah, you know what? Up here, just north of us, a half an hour north, because I was out doing an errand, listening to the radio station, and they're forecasting four degrees Celsius overnight up there. It's crazy. Yeah, it's like twenty-five miles north of Lake Ontario. It's uh, it's insane. Yeah, it doesn't make sense. Yeah. So I don't uh, know how it can be like snowing and then like sleeting and then just like 88 and humid. Oh, I know it, it's yeah. And the humidity kills me, man. I got to ask you. So, you know, what, I'm going to get started here. Yo crew. Welcome to the Skipper Report. We got Adam Sauerwin back, part two, because we talk so much skiing and outdoor activity in, uh, during the wintertime. It's like, I want to talk to him about the pursuit and his van conversions and what drove him to living in a schoolie the first time. But before we get going, we're, we're talking about the weather because it's uh, June 22nd, 2021, and uh, they're forecasting up here... 25 miles north of Lake Ontario, 4 degrees Celsius. I, th- I think that might be 30, 38, 39 degrees Fahrenheit. Yeah, either way, it's stupid. Yeah. <laughs> it's the way I look at it. Like, yeah, I don't know. I love winter, and I'm, like, all for it when it's happening. But, yeah. like, I am also, like, go with the flow as far as weather. But when I'm, like, swimming in the lake and, like, surfing and everything else and then it's just like oh it's gonna be nearly freezing i don't know like i just go into like i'm not a depressed person and oh like, right seasonal depression is real and i can't yeah. believe and i hate the word depression because it's not but i'm like you just want to hermit like when it's 80 you're like i'm out i'm I'm into it or when it's 10 degrees or, or zero degrees and snowing you know yeah it's great you're like you're up at five but when it's like you look at the forecast and it's like oh it's gonna be four degrees celsius and foggy it just like shuts you down yeah it's it's hard yeah yeah i know i i love this weather i i don't mind the heat but man the humidity that's been developing over the last few years is it just kills me man i've always been a guy who just like even in high school playing basketball it's like guys did not want to defend me because i could slide between two guys because I was oh, sweating like crazy. Same. I eat a chicken wing and I'm like so <laughs> like I'm not kidding either. Like I anything like medium spice, I'm just sweating. Right. If I think about activities, I'm sweating. Right. It's crazy. Like I it's just who I who I am, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. So anyways, hey, what was the weather like out in Utah when you were out uh mountain biking with Jess? We had it was perfect. It was like chilly nights you know, drop down enough to like cool down the van, but then it was like 80 to 90 degrees Fahrenheit, obviously, um, during the day it was perfect. So like we'd get up early, get our ride in, then like kind of hang at camp and just relax or go for a walk. Cause there's no shade. Right. East coast. We're just like, Oh, we can always hide. And you don't think about that. Yeah. But like, you can't, there's no shade. You're in the desert. You're like, (laughs) yeah, I I don't know how people, You know, I'd watch that uh, homestead rescue or something. There's that guy from Alaska who builds homesteads, and he and his daughter and son would go down and rescue somebody who's got a homestead, and there's somebody trying to build a homestead and grow stuff in the desert, and it's like, dude, what are you doing? It's a desert. I mean, it's just another level of suffering. But, yeah, we we were fortunate on weather. Uh, And then, you know, in the afternoon it would cool right down, and it's weird there because it's just – I don't know. It's I'm an East coaster. You're an East coaster. Yeah. So like we always have some type of protection, whether it be wind protection yeah. or sun, you know, like the trees are a valuable resource oh. that we take. Yeah. We don't realize how much like you, obviously we know we need trees. But yeah. When you're in the desert, you're just getting like, it's beautiful out, but it's windy and you're just getting like sand, but like you're so there's nothing you can do. Yeah. You're just like frustrated yeah. in I, all the best ways. I remember the first time we kind of RV'd. Uh, we took my uh, in-laws road trek 200 out west on a road trip for five weeks or six weeks. And we were coming back. I think we were in Bozeman. And all of a sudden I could see this 
curtain coming. I was like, holy shit, here comes a sandstorm. And then, you know, the sagebrush is rolling across the parking lot. We just made it into the van and it felt like we were getting sandblasted, like no protection from anything. Yeah, it's it's bizarre. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, I miss trees. When I, when I came home, I was like thankful to be back, like hiking in the trees, which usually you hate when you're here. You're like, oh, I want to be above tree line or I yeah. want to. And I was like, oh, I love this. Yeah. Give me this canopy and this shelter all yeah. day, every day. I know at our cottage, because we're at the bottom of a hill at the lake, in the evenings, no matter how hot it gets during the, during the summer, we have back windows where our bedroom is, and there's cold air rushing down through the cottage. It's so nice. Yeah, that's it's like free air conditioning. Around yeah, there. for sure. For sure. So I got to ask you, let's get this going. So back with the og pursuit not the podcast but the van and it was anything anywhere right uh whatever one oh that's it okay okay so give us a little bit of backstory about uh because you alluded to it in the previous podcast about you had that nine to five it seems so long ago and it seems so and i say this to all my podcast like guests yeah is that like your life is your life so it's boring Right. But when you're like, so I prep my guests, just not a lot, but just a little bit like, Hey, so don't skip over that stuff because people want to hear it. Yeah. But then when you say that, I'm like, Oh, I skipped over it. Cause it's just my, like, I don't know. That's what I do. And that's what I've done. But I forget like, that's if anyone wants to hear my story, that's probably why. Yeah. (laughs) So so it's funny that you say that, but um, I don't know. I went to college and graduated and like got a real job and did the thing and I'll make that part shorter. And I worked for a year in an like environmental world, basically. And I hated it. I thought I would like it because it's like, oh, I'm an outdoorsman. I like right. the planet and I care. And it's like, I thought, it's like me. It's like, oh, I'd like to buy a, I'd like to run a bike shop. But when you own something like that, you don't get to do the stuff you like. Yeah. And it was just. You know, it's just there's a lot of politics involved on like what's safe and what's not safe, and it could change tomorrow. It's just like what we're going through now. Like, yet yeah, a month ago, we had to wear masks everywhere, and like things change, and yep. that's okay. Yeah. But I'm not saying it, but like it just changed. Like, one day the rules are different, and I had a really hard time with that because uh, obviously you have your personal opinions on environment and how things should be run. Right. But I did that for a year, and I was miserable, and I just wanted to be a ski bum, and I was still young. And there, I grew up down the street from a bus garage. Right. Like, uh, you know, they just had hundreds of school buses. And every year they put them out for sale. So I stopped by the one day and I just, on a whim, was like, you know, how much is a bus? And they told me. And I, so I just bought one. Like, I don't, I don't know. I just, there was no, like, thought in it. I grew up kind of a motorhead and, like, fixed it. So I wasn't worried about, like, fixing it or getting it running. Right. Or yep. It was just, all right, I'm going to do it. And actually, my buddy... Mike Croco, he used to work for Red Bull. Now he's a uh, marketing guy for New Balance. Right. But we had met at like our last day of skiing at Holiday Valley. And I was like, I want to go on a surf trip. He's like, I want to go on a surf trip. I was like, all right, let's plan one. So that day, like being acquaintances, we put a uh, trip in the books for like August. And I was like, you know, I might have a school bus by then. And he's like, okay, you know, like this guy doesn't know me from nothing. Right. Uh, other than we're just like mutual acquaintances through skiing, snowboarding. So like two weeks before the trip, we're like planning it. And I like text him the next day. I was like, I bought a bus today. So I think we're taking the bus. <laughs> so I, so long story long, I bought a bus. Uh, it was a Chevy 1500 short bus converted it real half-assed like i didn't know i wasn't a woodworker uh i didn't know what i was doing i didn't know anything about solar i remember i had it it was a terrible build in hindsight it was really gross wet moldy like because you don't know i don't i didn't know anything right no uh what I, you know when it's 80 degrees and you're insulating a van it's like oh this is going to be warm but it was that year I don't know. It has to be seven years ago now, but it was like our coldest winter to date. It was like one of our best winters, but it was frigid. And I had a propane heater, which if you don't know about propane heat, it just creates a ton of moisture. Oh, so you had like one of those, uh, buddy heater things. Exactly. All right. I was like, I was like 20, 
I don't know, young, 20 young. <laughs> and I didn't know it. I didn't know. I didn't care. And yeah. I, I mean, I skied a hundred plus days that year. I drove this bus around. It was a rotted piece of garbage. It had bald tires, but nothing mattered. And I think everyone should dirt bag it once in their life. Yeah. Like, cause you just know. And that year I was the healthiest, most fit, my immune system. Like, I'm not like, Oh, I can feel uh, my immune system worked. Cause I slept in cold. I lived in cold. I would have to melt a block of ice every morning. And this isn't like a hardship story. I wasn't poor. Yeah. I mean, I'm poor. I'm poor today, poor tomorrow. But it's like, a I choice, like, man. Yeah. It was a choice. Yeah. And like, I would like melt the block of, I would put water that was melted in my pot before I went to bed, knowing it would be frozen in the morning and then just like simmer it until I could like get it so I could boil it, you know, right. without like, like i don't know if you ever just burn ice it's weird yeah like it doesn't burn but it's just a weird but um oh it was a suffer fest i lived in my sleeping bag willingly like i just had a negative 30 bag and like if i was up and i wasn't skiing i was in my bag because right. nothing was warm yeah just but like my, the mountaineers man yeah and i was they're doing it way tougher than I am, but it's amazing what your body does. And like, you know, you're, you're talking about like the Alaskan homestead people. That's just what they know. And you become so for lack of a better term, like hard. Yeah. Like you're just like, my body was like, it wasn't like, I didn't look good. I wasn't like physically fit. <laughs> I was still fat and like me, but my body was just like, a it was like a machine. It just yeah. like, it was running and I, I didn't get sick. I wasn't like, it was crazy. My body was just in this mode. Uh, but then that, like I went to get it inspected and my uh, shocks were literally like where my shocks mounted were yep. just completely rotted. So oh, the only wow. thing keeping my front shocks on was my hood. <laughs> so if I'd open the hood, the shocks would go up and then I would jack the thing up and close the hood to get them and then they would just hit the hood right. so it was rotted it was done Man manual it. manual low rider yeah it was just <laughs> i didn't care it yeah. was like I, you know I, I didn't have nothing mattered like if it broke down it didn't who cares i would have left it there that's like sean and i bought this beetle this spring from my daughter's boyfriend it's a diesel it's got four hundred and thirty thousand kilometers on it and uh it's 20 years old, and I don't really care because you know what? I get 800 miles on $45 worth of fuel. Yeah, it's they're crazy. I had a TDI Jetta. Right. Probably, it's probably same year-ish. Mine was an 01. Yeah. Uh, it's crazy. Yeah, I get 47 miles of the gallon yep. without wh while beating on it. Yeah, know? and you know what? This thing down the highway, if I need to pass somebody, I'd, I could do 80 miles an hour, no problem. Yeah, they're great. I yeah. don't know why we don't. Everyone doesn't drive efficient cars, but I can't say anything. I have like, I have the worst fuel efficiency. My best fuel efficient vehicle is my van. And then I have a 2001 Ford excursion with a V10. So that gets about eight miles to the gallon. Wow. I have a V8 Volkswagen Touareg that gets like 11 miles to the gallon. And then I have a 65 Volkswagen, but that's like my little. That's your Sunday car. Yeah, it's not much. My dad and I, that was our COVID project. My dad oh, and I cool. uh, found one and had no interior or anything, but it was like a good shell. And we, he's not a car guy, but he's like very meticulous. Yeah. So he redid all the interior and I got it like up to par mechanically. And it's just, it lives at my parents and they, they drive it every Sunday. And that's, right. it's perfect. That's I'll keep cool. it forever as long as they're driving it. So. That's cool. But yeah, um, yeah. Let's get back to the sur surf story that you and your buddy were. Uh... Yeah, so well, that was just like awesome. That's like a trip that. Did you go out you west know, to surf, or was it no, east coast? No, we went to Jersey. We had a big oh, yeah. group. Uh, uh, went to Long Branch, New Jersey, but we both worked for Red Bull at the time, so we knew a lot of like the surfer bros in Jersey from Red Bull and right. uh, like Ashbury Park area. So we just went on a surf trip for two weeks and like basically learned how to surf on the trip and. It was unreal, but when we went mountain biking, we went to Action Park, you know, in New Jersey, uh, went to the water park, went to, it was just like a <laughs> dude, but it's fun to be like a tourist. And that's all it was. Like, yep. I bought a van, a van or that bus. And I remember I drove like 
most of the way. And then Mike was like, I'll drive. And he drove for like 10 seconds and like everything <laughs> fell off the shelves. <laughs> that is like that have been on the shelves for like hundreds of miles. Well, because you know how to massage your vehicle, right? Yeah, you just got to know. It's like, you you know, you can drive like a jerk towing your RV, but you're going to have more work when you get oh, yeah. to camp because yeah. your RV <laughs> stuff's going to be everywhere. Like it'll stay. But yeah. So we did that. Um, I, you know, I, it was amazing. And then I got rid of that bus and I was like, all right, that was cool. That was fun. Like, I think I'm good. And then like a summer, yeah, that was like spring after the winter, I had to scrap the bus because it was complete garbage. And, and so why, why did you call it the pursuit? Uh, I just love the idea of the pursuit. Cause I think that's what life is. Yeah. It's the pursuit. And it's the pursuit of anything. Like if it's the pursuit of your career, right? the pursuit of happiness, the pursuit of, you know, lifelong relationships, the pursuit of children, like people want those things. Yeah. Like, so I think it fits this mold of it's the pursuit and it's your pursuit and everyone's pursuit is different. Right. And it's, you know, it's the mentality of like, whatever, whenever, which was like my little motto, which kind of still tries to be. And it's funny because my buddy's like, hold me over it they'll be like dude you want to go dirt biking tomorrow and i'm like i don't know dude like i yeah you know I, i'm 35 years like i have responsibilities now and, I, yeah. and they're like dude whatever whatever and i'm like <laughs> all right i'll see you at eight you know and then i like dismiss all my responsibilities but i think the pursuit to me and it's funny because i never talk about it but it's so much more than like the bus the bus was just an object that people liked yeah. like it was like a cool this guy's doing what he wants to to do and if the listeners want to see it on your instagram page i believe there's some little mini movies of the pursuit and some of the yeah, stuff so we had a cory potter and i did a web series and it it went viral and we could have i mean we should have kept going with it but it was hard we were young and yeah it it's cost tough. us a lot of well it cost a lot of money to do it and it wasn't like i wasn't cory potter is a, a filmer he's a videographer that's what he does for a living and this was seven to i mean almost 10 years ago now yeah so he was like making his career so he didn't have a lot of time to do free stuff and i was i was reaping all the benefits as far as like i was the star of the web series right but like i wasn't a free jacket doesn't put fuel in my gas tank and i was right. driving Corey all over and that was the only way i could pay him and that's not a complaint but like i would give him free trips yeah like we we're sponsored by ski Vermont. Uh, so we had lift tickets to all of Vermont resorts and like, that's awesome, but you still got to drive to all of them. And right. you still have... yeah. So it was, uh, but it went really well. And it, the whole thing was just kind of like live your best life. So it was very, it turned out very motivational and we didn't really plan it to be, we didn't set out to make a motivational thing, but like episode one, is still something that I look back on and like really enjoy. Yeah. Um, it was just, we didn't know, we didn't have a plan. Corey interviewed me, set up a camera. We went skiing. The skiing sucked. So it didn't become like ski porn, which you always think you're going to make. Uh, and it was just kind of like, you know, it, it's fun to look back because life gets busy and jobs and money. And it was like, you know, do what, do what you love every day forever is kind of like my, yeah. the long motto of the whatever, whenever. And the bus was just a simple object to like draw people in. That right. was like the gimmick. Yeah. And I didn't plan that, but that's just what it was. But the pursuit was my buddy's a designer. Uh, he designed for Burton for years and he made me a logo. And we were like thinking of all these names and all these, but like, you know, we had, he was again all my friends were young in their career so it was like a fun project we still have a logo i still use it i have shirts i don't like go crazy but it's a really simple buffalo and i'm from buffalo new york and buffalo's rome and i roam so it kind of like was all played into one but we had a huge list of things and i i don't know if i i don't know where the pursuit came from or what and it's funny because a lot of brands use it now um, well, I love it because, then, like when you but... started your podcast, you weren't, you started off with the pursuit and I like that name and you were like looking for another name. So I'm, I'm glad that you've stayed with the pursuit. Yeah. It's a tricky one. Cause it's like, do you hold on to things like that? That phase of my life isn't over. I'm still a 
35 year old kid and yeah. I still like try to have fun every day while working as little as I can while surviving and like growing and you know and this year's been crazy because everyone had an asterisk year this year yeah. but I I didn't know if I wanted to like reinvent it or like what I don't know. Like I always had like up next in my right. brain as a podcast idea. Oh yeah. Like that was like, I don't know. I like that name. Like, but then it's kind of like my next guest needs no introduction, which is David Letterman. Yep. Uh, so I don't know the pursuit worked and like, it's a, you know, it's a weird with the podcast. Cause I'm, it's the out of bounds podcast. Yeah. He, Adam Jabber. So there's two Adams, which is annoying, but he has an established <laughs> podcast. And I was a guest, and then I got asked to join his podcast. But, like, how do we differentiate right. a podcast that's doing the same thing on the same channel, on the same RSS feed? So I was like, okay, we'll just call it, you know, people know me as Adam X. So it's like, call it The Pursuit with Mr. Adam X on the Out of Bounds Network. So it's we're still working on that. Like, I'm not the name change, but just there's two Adams. Right. So people don't, it's hard. Like yeah, it's yeah, a yeah. weird, you know, we're, <laughs> they're two, we're different people, but we're doing the same thing on the same channel and our names are the same. So I got to tell yeah. you, I love that Instagram live last week where he's doing a tutorial with you setting up your new bicycle. Yeah, I think we're, and we're working on that. So people understand that there are two Adams. Yeah. And like, how do we do it and be fun and not be boring and, and really show ourselves like we, I didn't apply to be a podcast host. I didn't apply. And I'm fortunate because it's like a, it's a successful podcast in that space. Yeah. So like yeah. I've walked into a nice, but he asked me to be on the show. I don't know, at, two years ago and I was a guest and we just like, you know, I went, I was in, he lives in Western Mass. So I was in Vermont. So I had like detoured to his studio and we did, and we were recorded and we just like built a friendship off that, which yeah. I love because that's how life should be. Exactly. As far as just like life is short, meet people, make friends, yeah, build opportunities. You don't know, like you don't know, not saying every person I meet, I'm trying to get an opportunity out of it, but yeah. like had I never met jabber i might not ever have this podcast and, and really you know what you and i what? wouldn't be doing what we're doing here right now right yeah yeah exactly so yeah. it's like you know it's these little things in in all of our lives that bring us together like telemark skiing is kind of the gap yeah. the bridge for us so yeah. Yeah. but um yeah the pursuit i don't know i just think and i want to i need to start driving that home a little bit on why it's called the pursuit maybe on the podcast because i I think it'll help my guests understand, like, it's your pursuit. Like, yeah. This is my pursuit. What's your pursuit? And maybe that's like a branding thing that I need to work on. But I yeah, I, I, I love it. I think it's so cool. And, and your reasoning behind it, of your pursuit, my pursuit, you know, like uh, Sean and I had some, uh, she almost died on me twice. And uh, the first time it was like, okay, we're going to work to enjoy the better things in life. We have good pensions. We have good jobs. We, we both love our jobs. We are fortunate. You know, you said you're a 35 year old kid. I, I'm a 57 year old kid. But you I know. think that's great. That's what it should be. Yeah. I mean, you know, we work, you work 50 years and you get 10. Yeah. That, I don't like that. Yeah. I hate that. And yeah. like, I have sacrifices for that. Like I was, yes. you know, when I build a van, I rent, my buddy shop who yeah. works his ass off and has a three bay garage. That's huge. Yeah. I don't have that, but I have, you know, he looks at me and he's like, I don't have that. I don't have that freedom and time is free. And like, I make an yeah. okay living, Yeah, but it's sacrifice and it's your, you guys were fortunate enough to really like your jobs. Yeah. And I really love what I do, but it's, you know, it's highs and lows. And like I said, this yep. year has just been, or the past year has been like, oh. who knows? Like, oh, I don't that, know where I am, what I'm doing. Yeah, I that was, that was like my last guest, Jonathan Capozzi from Old Growth Ski Co. You know, he's gone through a horrendous year at school because it's always flip-flop. And I wouldn't want to be an educator this year, you know. No. Hybrid, homeschool, in the build, whatever. It's like, what the heck's going on? You just get your mojo going and then everything switches around. You know, yeah, so he's thinking of taking a year off. 
and you know, pursuing. I know I text them after I listen to the <clears throat> podcast and I was like, dude, good for you. Like, yeah. Cause that's what, like, I'm just taught and I, it's easy for me. I don't have, you know, I don't have a wife. Like I have a long-term yep. girlfriend and she's amazing. And thank you, Jess, for putting up with my bullshit. <laughs> but like, we don't have kids and I don't have a mortgage and right. I don't have like, so it's easy for me to make those hard decisions, easier for me to make those hard decisions on like saying no to money and walking away from comfort. Cause yeah. like, I don't have money and I don't have comfort. So, well, you know what? That like, was like me. I, I was fortunate enough to graduate with an honors degree. So I didn't know this when I got into teaching, I had taught for seven years before I realized an honors degree got me at the second highest pay level of our grid. I was like, I just had to put in the years, you know, to get off the grid. But I was like, yeah, I don't need to go back to school and upgrade and this, that, and the other thing. You know, for me, it was summers off, <laughs> Yeah. you know, and then when we had kids, I was, I, I was the primary caregiver for our children. You know, they're off school. I'm off school. I didn't have to shove them off to, to some babysitter and all that sort of stuff. You know, we were really fortunate. And Sean said she couldn't have her career if I didn't have mine. And out of all 30 years that we worked, uh, I was the breadwinner one year. <laughs> so yeah, I was always second. How, like, yeah, and I was but, putting in time with the kids, right? So Yeah, add up daycare costs. Yeah. Like bre breadwinner gets real even when you start thinking about that. And, and you know what? We, team, we're a team. Exactly, yes. Just what you said. We're a team. That's what it needs to be. And, you know, I joke about Jess because, like, we look at houses and, like, you know, that step is coming, I'm sure. But, like, I'm like, Jess, I've basically unemployed for the last 15 years. Like I'm not, but like, they're not, the banks look at me like with well, this guy is loose cannon. Like, <laughs> like I'll be able to pay it. And I always am. And I'm just a, like, obviously I own a, a photo business and yeah. weddings are good and they're great. And like, they're again, this year's always weird. So highs and lows, but on paper, it's like, this guy could make 140 grand this year. This guy could make a dollar. Right. Like this guy is loose. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. I always laugh like, you know, and it's a team and that's how it should work. And, yeah. you know, where I can't, you know, I can fix all my own stuff. You just figure it out. I yeah. Know, that's just how I live. Like yeah. if I had to go roof tomorrow, I, I would, I don't want to. I don't, I, I don't. I've fallen off no. enough roofs. I was like, yeah, no, I'm, I, I give we up. We did roofing. it when we were kids. And yeah. I, I'm glad I know how to. And like my theory with roofing now is like, if a friend needs me to help him roof, yeah. I will. But yeah. like, that's it. Yeah. Like, I don't want to, it's funny. I'm like, I don't want to do it for money anymore. Yeah. It's like, that's when the only time you should want to do it. And you're like, no, I'll just help a friend. Yeah. Like I'm telling all my friends to put steel roofs on then you never uh, have to so change your shingles. Easier. Yeah. It's great. Yeah. But yeah, I don't know. I just, I don't know. I don't so, know where I'm at in life. I'm just surviving and trying to enjoy it. And so I know where you're at now. You're in a newer van. Yes. So this is your, your third one, isn't it? This is my since since the pursuit. Well, I had no. I've had I had the original bus, yeah, the Chevy, and then I had a Ford bus. Okay, I did that for two years, and that one's still going. That wow. one is actually the owners just are redoing it right now, and they live in Boston. Okay, uh, it got passed through a couple of people, and I like thought it was gone, and then someone messaged me on Instagram and was like, is this your boss? And I was like, dude, yes. Like anything you need to know, I could tell you everything about it. And, right. Uh, blah, blah, blah. But it's a Ford seven, three. Uh, and that's a long bus, right? No, that was a short. Oh, that's as well. a, oh, okay. Yeah. It was a short. He had a big patio on the back that I could fit my dirt bikes on and right, stuff. Right. But, uh, so I had that. And then I actually bought a shuttle bus and I never converted it. I had it for like three weeks traded for a full size bus and I was going to convert that. And then it was Christmas Eve and someone left a note on the, on like the window that was like, if you want to sell this, I'll, I'll buy it. So I sold that the next day. Cause I don't care. Nothing has any value to me right, other than, right. um, and then I bought a university of Buffalo shuttle bus with a big four sixty in it. And I was like, gonna build that. And I was like, you know, I'll put it on eBay and see what happens. And like a church bought it, picked it up, <laughs> drove it out of here. 
And then I bought. You cannot use car or use bus salesman. Oh, <laughs> it's never ends. I, I can't stop. I just can't. Yeah, I don't know. I, nothing has. People get attached to things. I don't. Like right. everything is just like. If it if it's a tool for me, so right. like if the tool yeah. works and I like it and I keep yeah. using it, I will. But then I bought a brand new Ram Promaster, which I, I never bought a new car in my life. And, and I like, think that's again, the one I saw you when you were. Uh, Snurfing or yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, so I bought a brand new, I never bought anything brand new in my life. Again, me walking into my credit union that I've been a member of since I was one years old, right? They're like, Who are you? and they know my entire <laughs> family, and they're like, Well, you need proof of income. And I was like, Dude, just trust me. And like, you can't tell a bank <laughs> to trust, but like, you know, I got like my income is I'm self employed, so like it comes from a hundred different avenues. Like, I don't just have like a a W nine to be like, Oh, I made this this year. I'm like, Oh, well here's this. And that. so they're like, Oh God. But I, you know, I got a pro master and that was my first real build where right. like carpentry mattered. Cause the bus, you just drill holes in and you patch and you fix and you like, it's, it's garbage week in Hamburg right now where yep. I'm at. Oh yeah. Yeah. So you're, yeah, and I'm like driving cruise. around. I'm like, Oh, look at those cabinets. So look at that. But like when you're building a, a brand new vehicle, you, so uh, I basically taught myself how to build a van correctly with right. the help of friends. Uh, Pat Merrick is, he's a, he was an Ellicottville guy. He's in Philly now, but he's like a master woodworker, yep. carpenter. So he coached me through. It's funny because now he's still way, obviously, like he's got years of trade ahead of me but I can build what he can build now, but yep. like my, it'll take me three weeks for what he can do in two days. Right. Like it's crazy watching like a master of their craft at anything. But, well, cause they've solved all these problems a hundred times before. So like I always confident. say carpentry. Yeah. Carpentry is always problem solving, especially when you're doing renos. It's like, Oh yeah. So how do I build the one around this wheel? Well, what would go best in here? But I love woodworking because most of it's common sense. Like there's tricks of the trade for yeah. sure. But like, yeah. I don't know if that doesn't fit, then you sand it or you cut yeah. it or you yeah. like, it's not like, it's not rocket science. No, it's if they had, like, it's if, like the second oldest trade in the world. Right. But <laughs> like if this, if it's a 36 inch countertop, then like, I guess that has to be, you know, yep. depending on your countertop thickness, like, okay, then. You take an inch and a half from that, yep. and now it's a, you know, 34 and a half inch shelf, and then you put your car, now you're at 36. Like, yeah. That is simple to me, and that's why I like it, because I'm simple-minded. Like, right. if, then, that makes sense. Yep. So, <laughs> but that was the first one that I ever, like, started understanding woods and, like, you know, I just made, like, garbage out of pine, and then yeah. I realized, like, oh, pine is really soft, and yeah. You're driving a vehicle down a road at 80 miles an hour in a snowstorm with chains on. Like, you know, it's. Yep. So ProMaster was great. Built that out, sold it. And that's that's front wheel drive too, right? That was front wheel drive. Um, it's not my favorite chassis right. by any means. Right. I think it goes. Sprinter's the best for a reason. They're really well built. Yeah. Then the Ford Transit, then the ProMaster. Um the ProMaster is great because it's front wheel drive and it's awesome. And like, you know, all your weights on the front, but it's a work van that's loaded up. Like you build a, you put a hundred sheets of plywood in here. Like all your weight is off your front wheels now. Yeah. So it kind of yeah. defeats the purpose of being yeah. good in the snow. Uh, but I sold that to a couple in Philly and we still talk. They just sent me actually when I was out in Moab, they were in Moab and she like sent me a video of her like overlanding the pro like not intentionally, but yeah. like, you know. Yeah. And I was like, I'm literally in Moab right now. And she's like, Are you kidding me? They were leaving. Ah. But it was like I was like, Oh, it's cool that both of my like because that's still like back to the pursuit. Like that was my little creation. Yeah. And, like that these these two rad chicks are like climbing and using it exactly what it's made for. Was right. Like, it was cool. So they send me like, it's like my baby. Like they send yeah. me like updates of like, Oh, it made it to California. And I'm yeah. like, yeah, you know, yeah. but then it breaks and I'm like, Oh God, but I didn't build, like, I didn't, I didn't make the van. That's right. what I always say. Yeah. 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 You just made the I inside. Did, I made the inside. So if something crumbles on the inside, like I'll, 
do my like you she, they've owned it for two years so yeah like they're but they're awesome like we help problem solve and right. she didn't think her solar was working so i like like kind of like what jabber and i did over yep. uh yeah, on yeah. instagram like i walked her through like okay and i know it i made schematics and like i try to like map but like i'm an idiot savant i know where everything in that thing is and how it is right i was like there should be a a green wire within and she's like what well, i'm like and then she's like holy shit it's right and i'm like there it is yeah <laughs> like yeah because you built it you know what i mean you know yeah yeah and now i'm on to a 2016 ford transit 350 diesel extended so the promaster was a short wheelbase yeah this is like the biggest baddest one that ford makes uh and it's it's great i don't know i love it i don't it's for sale because everything's for sale. But again, yeah. it's for me, it's times are tough and not in a bad way. But like, this is a trade that I'm pretty good at. I understand it. And I always say I build them for life, not Instagram. Right. To see so many of these van builds and all this hot topic bullshit. And it's like, this thing is made for, for war. Like it's a war wagon. Yep. It'll be, if it's zero degrees out or negative five on the East coast, this thing will be 75 degrees, well insulated. Like it, all your clothes will be dry. It'll have power. Do you use one of those heat. little diesel heaters? Yeah, I run a diesel heater. Yep. Nice. It's the, I mean, it's, yeah, it's the answer. It really is. Um, yeah, I don't know. I try to make them as homey as possible, all while making them functional. So, so here's the question you think about homey. Where do you shit, shower, and shave, man, in a little van? So the back doors have the back doors open and then there's a tap there. Okay. So I have a shower hookup. Yep. Nice. Uh, so I can shower. I have 16 gallons of water. So you got to be conscious on where you are and what yeah. you're doing. Uh, and then I have a primitive, like a chemical toilet, a chemical toilet yeah. that it's a five gallon. So between that and like public facilities, yeah. I don't know. What do you need? I don't. Yeah. Well, that, that's like Sean and I, you know, we've got the Flying J travel air card, you know, if we're going places and we don't really feel like, you know, we haul around or our, our fresh water is 100 gallons. There's like a 1,000 pounds right there. It's like, that's, oh, yeah. that's fuel, you know, yeah. so you just hit the Flying J shower there or if you got a membership at the Y or a gym, you know, Planet Fitness or whatever. Yeah, and they're clean. Yeah. Like the flying J people are like scared. Like those are like the cleanest bathrooms I've ever been in my yeah, life. I know. But my my trade secret is climbing gyms. Yeah. Uh that's where I like to go. Like if I'm traveling solo, because you meet people, yeah. they're nice, they're like minded people. They always have a shower. And it's usually nine bucks to go bouldering. Yeah. So like I boulder, I get like a good cool down activity at night. Yeah. And then I shower. And then they usually let me sleep in their lot. Right. It's like a good versus if you go to like a fitness gym, yeah. no one wants to talk to you. No one yeah. sure who you are. Yeah. No. So the climbing gyms are like my, but I'm also a dirt bag. Like I don't <laughs> care when yeah. you're by yourself. You don't care. Yeah. Like when Jess comes with me, it's definitely showers are more right. conscious. Like, you know, she's got a full head of hair. I have like this dumb little sprout. And, yeah. <laughs> but, you know, I, I just bought a Nemo shower it's a little five gallon portable shower is that the one that like you hang up and it's solar you don't hang it it's it's got a foot pump and you pressurize it so it sits on the ground and it's just got like a like a dish sink sprayer yes and it's amazing like i I, it's perfect like it gives you a great shower yeah the thing's black so the water gets plenty hot but even just washing your hands and stuff yeah uh, Cause we ride dirt bikes all summer. So I can put that in the trailer. I can carry extra water. Right. Um, I know when I was yeah. up helping my brother-in-law build his house on the shore of Lake Superior, we were in an adjacent lot that a camp cottage was being torn down and we didn't have water. And so I was like, Sh- Sean would go uptown every day to visit her girlfriends, whatever. And she'd go to Rob's condo and shower. And I was like, I'm the dirt bike. You know, I'm, carpentry all day long sweating my ass off and it's like i gotta get clean you don't get clean in cold water in lake superior so i I, off amazon i bought this i don't know a couple of gallon coleman black bag and i'd fill it up and leave it in the sun all day hang it from a tree and 
you know what? It worked perfectly, man. Yeah, they work. I had <clears> one. Uh, my big thing is one Moab. There was no trees. There's nowhere to <laughs> hang it. Uh, and I can hang it off my ladder in my van. Yeah. But I hate carrying the water in the bag i don't trust it right right if that bladder bursts it's game over yeah it's not yeah it's not a very thick bladder so then i usually bring a rubbermaid tub and i put that in the tub right but i don't know i'm happy with the nemo one so far i've had it for a couple months and i i was just camping this weekend and uh we went dirt biking and like I mean, you just, camp every night <laughs> i know but the, like there's like actual camping yeah and there's like and you don't you don't have shore power and and water like a traditional RV or or something like no, a road trip. No, I don't have city hookup yeah. for water, but I can I can use shore power. If oh, okay, need. like I I have the ability to plug in yeah uh, to my so it runs through my inverter, which is an inverter charger, yeah. and it'll buy like once the batteries are full, it can bypass yeah, and just run. But I don't run anything. Like the only thing I char- the only thing I use ac4 which would be outlets yeah when, like <clears throat> normal house 120 outlets. volt yeah yeah would be just to charge my laptop and my cameras right uh everything else is all dc my fridge is 12 volt dc so that's just direct current right yeah. to the battery and how's how, how many how many cubic feet is your fridge like it's like a small bar fridge yeah it's small but like how's the dc handle because i know a lot of rv manufacturers are now going to 12 volt refrigerators instead of the the propane, propane. electric uh it's good you know <laughs> it it draws it basically draws 20 to 30 amp hours a day oh, okay. or amps a yep. day yeah uh and i have 300 amp hours so and it all it just depends on ventilation like it's in a box you right know, you build everything in stuff kind of yeah and like i had to change it actually i had to put vents in because it was in the box which then was holding heat. Yeah. And then the pump was working harder, which was then creating more heat. So, but yeah, because they're, they're, I mean, they're condenser fits, fridges, right? They draw the heat out. They're not right, actually exactly. putting cold air in. So I put a fan in there on like a thermo switch. So if it gets to 70 degrees inside the box, the yeah. fan will then turn on and vent itself. Yeah. But it's good. I mean, they're not huge, but like I can fit. You know, on the door, I can fit, like, two cartons of milk if I, like, just to give you size. Yeah, yeah. Like I'm not, I don't carry two cartons of milk, but, like, <laughs> to give you size, it, it'll fit a carton, of, you know, side-by-side side carton of milk. And then there's, like, a little veggie tray underneath that's probably four inches high. And I don't know. You fit. I don't know. It's plenty. Like For a university people, fridge. <laughs> yeah, it's like that. And then, you know, if we're – and then I usually, if I'm towing the trailer and the dirt bikes – I bring a big cooler and I just put all the drinks in the cooler and then like the meats and vegetables stay in the fridge right. and then they don't get soggy and stuff yeah. as stuff melts. But yeah, it's fine. And all my drawers are huge and everyone laughs, but like, again, I built them. I built it cause I've done this and right. you need storage. Everyone, you, exactly. Every Instagram post is like, Oh, look at this bed that goes up. But I'm like, yeah, where did you put all your pillows in your sleeping bag? Like, that had to go somewhere. So now you have you're either traveling with an empty drawer, which is insane to me. Yeah. Uh, so I'm just like a hater on everything on Instagram when it comes to that because it's just not real. Or yeah. like, you know, they have now a lot of people are putting their shower in like the hatch of their van. Yeah. Like if they have a an actual van, they put it like in the hatch, and I'm like, yeah, that like that doesn't work. That's yeah. not. I don't know. It doesn't so work for to... me because like I'm being six foot six. <laughs> yeah, and just like you don't want water in your van. Like, yeah, that's always the number one battle is just moisture. Like when it's summer, oh, it's yeah. humid and everything's wet, so you need and everything's in tight spaces and stuff, so you need airflow. And then in winter, everything's wet, so yeah. you need. So I try to build them as simple as possible while having creature comforts while being functional. Like I put a closet in this one, and I put a big closet, and I think I would do it again. Uh, it's just somewhere to put stuff. Like you get the, you get done skiing and where do you put all your stuff? It's all wet. It's all dripping. It's all. So now at least it has somewhere to go and live. And yeah. then the, again, the, my cabinet or my closet has an intake and an exhaust fan, just little, just yeah, tiny. air circulation. Like, yeah. Picture like a computer fan. Like yep. they're not like, yeah, but they're just, and that stuff, I mean, that is like a, it dries stuff so fast in there. It's, but that's, how I think of 
things. Right. And like, you know, the next one, I think I'm going to put my heater because the heater's usually, it bolts to your floor. It's like about five inches tall. Right. So I think I'm going to make a subfloor for my closet and drill holes so that when the heater's on, the residual heat will rise into right. the closet yeah. and now it'll dry my boot. So it's just stuff like that, that like that will help in the long run. And yeah, like exactly. just trying to make things very functional. Uh, it's kind of turned into like a little side gig as far as like, I just built some uh, for transit for somebody else. Someone just contacted me about a bus to build. So it's, it's fun. I love building them. Right. Like I real, it's therapeutic. I mean, anyone who's a woodworker, like w it sucks when it's a job sometimes, but yeah, it's cool. And there's no right or wrong way to do it. There's ways that I think make sense, but that's, you know, I just try to have it be as functional as possible. Right. And like I did, a, I do a real tile backsplash because yeah. everyone thinks it's a peel and stick. And I'm like, mm -hmm. oh no, that's real tile. Cause it's, it can be, it can easily be a depression cube. Yeah. Like you're out, you're by yourself a lot. You don't usually have TV for distraction. Uh, you know, you're the life of the party in the parking lot. And I don't mean this to be like, sad, it's just a reality. Like you're at a parking lot, you know, you go mountain biking or you go skiing and you've got the van and right. you've got cold beers and whatever. And then everyone leaves Yeah, and everyone goes home to their wives and kids or houses or apartments. And you're like, Oh shit. Like I gotta, I have nothing else yeah. except for skiing tomorrow, which yeah. is again, amazing. But so you gotta, you gotta think about those things and like n try to get as much natural sunlight as you can. Well, people, what you're van. describing is that movie nomad, right? I don't know if you've yeah. seen that. Yeah. Yeah. It's people don't realize you're, you're by yourself and, you know, I would imagine COVID hasn't hit you as badly. I know it's probably curbed your activities, but how you live hasn't affected your your personal no, living it, space or anything like that. No, it was weird. <clears throat> like I was out west when it happened. Right. And uh I was actually in I was in California. We got like literally six foot of snow in thirty six hours. And day one was in, I was in, it wasn't day one, but in California, I drove, long story long, I was in Utah at the Salt Lake Airport to fly to Portland to go work a marathon. Right. And it got canceled because COVID was like, this is right when we were like, things were getting canceled, but it wasn't, I was on the plane and like my boss called me. And uh, quote unquote boss, you know, I don't yep. know. How to, he's a boss, my superior. And he was like, Did you leave yet? And I was like, No. He's like, Are your bags on the plane? I was like, Yeah. He's like, If you can get off the plane, get off the plane because it's not happening. He's like, Or fly to Portland and you can have a hotel for four days. But like, meanwhile, I know the storm's coming to Tahoe because I've been yeah. studying yeah, it. Yeah, you know, yeah. you become a meteorologist when you're a skier. Yep. <clears throat> and uh, so I like, looked at the flight attendant and I was like, I got to get off this plane, you know? And she's like, what? And I was like, like my events canceled. I tell her way too much information and she doesn't care about it. And I was like, can I get off this plane? She's like, yeah, we're low. Like where the doors open. And I was like, all right, I got to go. So I got up and left, <laughs> got in my car and then drove to Tahoe. Got this. So this was a Friday night, got there before the storm nuked on Saturday. We got like probably two foot skied at Squa. It's great but there was like literally four foot of snow coming. Wow. Like, so I parked in my spot where I knew I could park and get out and get to the resort. And that night Val closed their resorts oh. and Squaw is an Altera resort. And I was like, one more day, like yeah, just yeah, give yeah, me yeah. one more yeah, day yeah. before you shut it down. But Val is the example, whether they're good or bad. Right. So they shut it down and I was like, damn. So I pow surfed that day too much snow. My buddy Tyler Burns was with me. He was in this Tacoma. Uh, we power surfed and like went to the grocery store and they were like sold out of gas, like the gas <sighs> station grocery store. Yeah. 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 And it was like, Oh shit, this is real. Like this is cause you're only getting blips of info when you're in your van. Like you can yeah. scroll the news, but I wasn't. Yeah. And so we waited there for two days until I could get gas. Cause I couldn't get out of there. I only had, I had enough, but I had, I was heating with gas. Yeah. You know, like, you know, so 
got out of there, bought like a ton of junk food, like, and the whole place was picked because everyone from San Francisco had went to their places <laughs> in Tahoe. Yeah. So I was like buying like shit that I love because I'm a dirt bag. Well, what, like, what, what, what's that stuff that you're talking? I don't I think it was beanie weenies. Yeah. I never heard yeah. of that, man. And Frank, then it's, it's, I saw some beans yeah. in a can. It's <laughs> disgusting, but it's amazing. Like it's easy. It's, it's I'm, I'm dirt bag. It's dirt bread, bag food. Yeah. Some beanie weenie. I was like, this place is stock. Tyler. I thought Ty, that was Tyler's first like experience of like true dirt bag. And, and you just interviewed him. Didn't you? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Because when you said the Tacoma, I was like, oh, I think that's Tyler. You just interviewed. Yeah. Yeah. I just interviewed. I just brought <laughs> him on the show. So, long story long, I was like, well, let's get to Moab because we were traveling separate, but like we're really close friends. Yeah. And the world was ending. And I was like, let's get to Moab. Let's stock up, like get a ton of water. And because we needed it, we didn't have running water. Like I remember being at the grocery store and you could only buy like two gallons of water. And I had like eight and the guy was like, and I like pointed out the window. I was like, dude, that's literally what I'm in for the next forever. Like I yeah. need this water. And he was like, all right, <laughs> for like, the apocalypse. but I wasn't like stocking up like to yeah. put in my, my condo. Like I was, yeah, yeah. so like, we'll go to Moab. I have a really good spot. It's off the grid. We won't see anybody. Cause at this point it was like the, literally the plague. It was like, don't see anybody. Don't touch anybody. Wash your hand. So we were up there. We were hiding. And like a, I don't remember what it was, a sheriff or a state, whatever. They like rolled up and he was like, where are you guys from? And we were like, Buffalo, New York. And he's like, where are you going? I was like, right here. Because at this time it was 14 days. Like, we're here. I have everything I need. I have water. We had bikes or something. You know, we had entertainment. We were good. And uh, he's like, nope, can't stay here. It's all closed. And that was like when it really got real. Like when they like closed uh blms okay well i was that was my next question they closed blms <clears throat> yeah they closed them they just shut it because everyone when they said it was two weeks everyone from everywhere was went just to like, blms right, i'll load up my camper and i'll go ride my side by side for two weeks. like yeah. it was a two-week vacation at yeah. that time so he was cool the sheriff or whatever he was and he was just like i'm gonna come back tomorrow just don't don't be here like just yeah. get moving you know yeah. So we like hemmed and hawed for a little bit. And I was like, I think I'm just going to start driving. So we just drove separately. You know, we both just headed back. East. Caravan. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And once it, it was weird. It was a weird time. And it is what it is. I think we're through it, but yeah. it's just like, yeah, it's crazy. But yeah, it was just a weird. The biggest thing was guilt. I felt guilty for doing things that I love to do that didn't. I don't felt I felt like didn't impact people. Right. Like I should still be able to go skiing. I should maybe the resorts are closed, but like can I go for a walk? Like can I yeah. ride my bicycle? So it was a really weird time and period and that was the I'm same bad. out here and that was like our previous conversation, right? And it's like I'm out in the country. I can throw a baseball into the cornfield at two houses over. My daughter lives in the middle of what is it this year? 500 acres of wheat. Yeah. And so we're like, out there building the our, and we talked yeah. about it a little bit, but it yeah. was just the guilt. That was weird. I never had the guilt. I was like, yeah, we made a good decision moving out here. Yeah. <clears throat> I definitely had some guilt. I did. I wasn't sure what to do and, and how to do it, especially being, and I hate the term, but like an influencer and yeah. like being, you know like, what, how to do it. That was, yeah, you could still do it, but how do you do it? What can you do? That's right. And, and like, but my big thing that I wanted to promote during that was like, not look at me, I'm out here doing it, but like, I have to do this for my mental right. health and fitness. So if you need to do this, find a way to do it and do it safely and yeah. like recognize who you could be hurting or impacting if something went wrong. Yeah. Like I went, we went to Mount Washington in March last year. Yeah. <clears throat> like COVID times I wasn't supposed to go to Vermont, let alone New Hampshire. And, you know, my Corey and I talked about it a lot. He lives in Killington. I like isolated myself, drove to Corey's. And then like, when we were there, when we saw people, people like ask where you're from. And like, we had like a store, like I'm from Killington, you know, and like, you yep. but like, 
I feel I did it safely, but I still felt like guilt for yeah. doing that. Yeah. And then we went skiing. Uh, we did airplane gully over at, at Mount Washington. And I remember like how at peace I felt mentally. Yeah. Like, I mean, I was dying cause I didn't move for months and then I went and did Mount Washington, but like <laughs> how important that was for me and like how important it was for Corey to like, do these so that was a good turning point and like we can do this safely and be smart and we didn't brag about it i think i posted it like two months later yeah well Which you know what make we, it any better but like us old guys we see young people these days and it's like dude what'd you put that on social media for like we did all that right. stupid shit too but <clears throat> nobody knew we never got in trouble because right. nobody recorded anything and mine's curated to an extent you know i'm not posting yeah. anything too stupid i don't really do anything too stupid anymore anyway <clears throat> other than just sketchy sport stuff but right. like yeah uh, i think i posted it and i put mental health is important too or something oh, like that like yeah. just it was just a picture of me with my skis on my back it yeah. wasn't like but people who knew where it was knew where it, you know people yeah. you can tell by a photo sometimes and like it was a weird thing but i think and i hope that like people learn from this and I might've said this before, but like you can still go outside, you can still ride your bike. Like you can still, you don't have to go to the bar and bars are great, but like buy that six pack of Sierra Nevada. Yeah. And, <laughs> no, but buy that, buy that six pack and meet your friends at the park. And like, yeah, I, I just hope that we like can remember that. Well, you know what is crazy during this time we were listening to the news, Sean and I, and uh, I have to say, Sean is my wife. There's a local guy. We go and we've been doing all sorts of renovations. It's a Benjamin Moore store. I taught his kids, and he'd hear me talk about Sean. Sean would go into the store. We never went in at the same time, and then Sean walked in, and there was a guy with him, with her, and this guy, Paul, thought they were together, and she goes, no, I'm Keith's wife, and he's like, you're Keith's wife? I thought Keith was gay because he always <laughs> talks about Sean. <laughs> that's, that's amazing. That's the it's best funny story how ever. People know each other though, right? Yeah. Like, that's the only scenarios they that he's seen you and Sean are like separate. Yeah, yeah. So it's it's, yeah, it's yeah, hilarious. It's, yeah. It's yeah. amazing. Yeah. So that's funny. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, so are you in Buffalo now? Yeah, I'm in Buffalo now. I was just in PA. Uh, we have a little camp up at uh, near Bradford. Oh yeah, at a dirt, at a dirt bike place. So yeah. I was there for a couple of days, and then I'm back. I'm at my parents stealing internet right now. <laughs> a tree fell in the backyard that I've been like chopping up, and my parents are plenty fine to do it, but yeah, I'd rather my dad golf every day. And right, <clears throat> so I got to go grab a log splitter after this and split the, some logs and. Yeah, I don't know what I got. I was just in California for work, and I was in Kansas City the following week. And is that's is, too. is the um, uh, wedding photography coming along this year? Yeah, it's happening. It's my numbers are definitely down, right. but my numbers are up for next year. So I oh, think it's going to be another like survive year for me. Yeah, doing this, which is fun though, because I can like focus on the on you know the pursuit podcast and like. Yeah really cater those relationships with brands and sponsors and learning that. Cause we have like, it's, it's crazy. It's a, it's a neat little, like I'm not getting rich off it by any means, but yeah. like I have some really good sponsors and I have some cool sponsorship opportunities coming up. So I'm really just trying to cater to those and yeah. hopefully make it like a viable source of income yeah. soon. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and it's, it's something I really enjoy and trying to get like new guests and showcase people that I think deserve to be showcased. I've been doing a lot of females. Well, you know what? Like you were my role model for going outside your wheelhouse. When you talked, interviewed, uh, can't remember her name, the ski mom. Oh uh, yeah. She's uh, uh Nicole. Yeah. And I was yeah. like, Oh shit. So that's when I reached out to Megan Kelly in Tahoe. And man, did I ever learn a bunch of stuff from her, what her life was like, you know, she's a full-time civil engineer and the mom of triplet six-year-old boys, like talk about a hectic lifestyle. And she's a ski athlete. Yeah. I think it's so, it's so like, 
one, their networks are crazy. Like from a selfish point of view, like Nicole's network is even, I mean, she doesn't have a hundred followers. She has 50,000, right. but like, even if she had a hundred, there are a hundred loyal, crazy, badass moms yeah. who are like, so it's like this. So that's from like the selfish standpoint. But I follow her and I'm not a badass mom. Yeah. <laughs> I, did, like the, I get into the stuff where you don't have to be a mom, you know, cause yeah, I really liked what she was talking about. It's just fun to get a different perspective. Like I'm a 30 yeah. something year old, cool guy, skier, bro. And I don't make the resorts or brands money. Yeah. And then she, and I didn't realize that until I talked to her and she's like, listen, and she wasn't rude. You know, I'm making her sound, but she's like, listen, I spend the fucking money here. Yeah. And like I Yeah, you forget a pair who, of goggles. It's like, oh shit, I gotta go buy a pair yeah, of goggles so, in the ski shop. And I she wasn't like that, but that's when I left the conversation. I was like, Oh yeah, they're the people that you should be marketing to. Yeah. Not the thirty something year old rad dude trying to hold on to a dream because he used to be able to huck cliffs and now he can't walk. Like, well, th- back know. in the day around here when I moved into town and I because I rode my bicycle, everybody knew me as oh yeah, there's the shop teacher who rides his bike to work every day. And then we had this government um, program, and it was, you know, they were getting the uh, recycling and energy, green energy going, and so they had this cycling thing. And I was like, dude, you know what? You need to market the town to cycle tourists because they have money. They may look like a dirt bag on a bicycle and bags. But that bike is seven grand. Yeah, and you know what? It has taken them 25 years for our municipalities around here to – develop that i was like man you should have should have listened to me back in the day yeah you missed it yeah it's buffalo's crazy for bike it's flat so it's fun and you can get anywhere and on a bicycle in about 20 minutes which is really cool and it's so easy like it's fun because you can bike places when it's hot and you're not disgusting when you get there right that's always like the downfall of like biking to work or like and buffalo is and they're putting bike lanes in everywhere it's all it's and see where I live is kind of like the Finger Lakes, you know, rolling okay. hills and all this sort of stuff. Which so. can be tough, though. You got to be a diehard to want to, like, yeah. meet friends for drinks and show up, like, so, yeah. you know. <laughs> so yeah, they, they, yeah, they, they have to be willing to uh, <laughs> say, yeah, it's okay, man. Yeah, it's dirt yeah that's yeah. why bike, cycling Buffalo is so fun because it's, it's flat, so yeah. it's easy as far as that goes, but. Yeah, the podcast is cool. That's and cool. I'm trying to get again showcase a ton of women, a ton like anybody who I want to showcase anybody really. Yeah, and like that's the fun part is I have this avenue, and I think again going back to the pursuit, everyone has like their pursuit. Yeah. So like, how did you get here? What did you do? And I, you know, I've I've got 17, 18 episodes out, and. I'm getting more and more comfortable and figuring it out and figuring out what works, what doesn't work. Yeah. And it's, you know, it's easy when you listen to it, you're like, Oh, you should have asked that. And I'm like, Oh, he is me. Yeah. (laughs) And so it's, it's like our first time we got on, we talked for an hour and I was like, Oh, we didn't cover half the thing. Yeah. I can talk and you can talk. So it's, I saw, I I saw this post on Facebook about, okay, so what can you talk about? Or like talk for nothing for 30 minutes. And I was like, I did that for 30 years as a teacher, you know, like I have my lesson plans, but I let the kids take the lesson where they went. And I made sure that I got the stuff in the real nuts and bolts in, but, and they would all make fun. It's like, ah, we just wasted a half an hour. And I was like, no, I got in what I needed. Yeah. Yeah. You didn't know you learned. I taught every year I do my, my, I may have said this on the last one, but my friend teaches a career in the arts class. Okay. Yeah. At Depew High School. So every year for like the last six years, I've gone in and spoke to the classroom because I'm like the cool hipster guy and they're listening to like their boring teacher, even though she's a badass. It's just like, you know, it's your teacher. It doesn't yeah. matter how cool you are. You're yeah. not cool. Right. Yeah. So like I can wear a short sleeve and show my tattoos and my hair can be dumb and I can swear because they're in high school and I shouldn't swear, but like I, that's always my gimmick is like, I don't get like when I get there, I'm like, I don't give a shit guys. They're not going to fire me because I don't work here. Right. So you can pay attention. And they're all like, oh, you know, but it's like, that's how you draw them in. Yeah. But this year I did it on zoom and oh my God, it was, it was like, 
I can't imagine like bombing at like a comedy night, but yeah. that's like what I felt like. Yeah, I was yeah. like, I can't imagine what those guys are going through. But oh yeah. Yeah. I, I don't know. It was, but I always really enjoyed speaking to the class and she does an awesome job. She links you with whatever career you think you might want in the arts. Yep. So like the, the one, the two kids wanted to be tattoo artists. And like, I feel like traditional high school would have been like, Oh no. Versus Krista, she's the teacher. She's like, oh, well, two of my friends are tattoo artists. So you want to see what this is and what, and like, so they really get to like yeah. see it and learn. They're like interns, you know, and yeah. then I do photo and sometimes I take graphic design kids and just show them like the greatest thing is that you're your own boss and you can do whatever you want whenever you want. Yeah. The bad thing is you're your own boss and you can do whatever you want whenever you want. Yeah. So like if you yeah, don't, don't be sitting on your ass the whole time, you got to get out, get a hustle. Right. And like the tattoo thing <clears> is like, Hey, that's on them forever. So if you're having a bad day, right. You could ruin that person's body for life. So, you know, it's, I really enjoy that that class exists at that yeah. high school and it yeah. gives them, you know, and most traditional parents don't want their kids to get into arts or like, you know, it's, it's so it's a cool class. Well, it's yeah, like it, my degree. What do you do with a phys ed degree? Right. There's only really one thing. Right? It's yeah. not, it's not kinesiology. I have kinesiology in my degree, but yeah. So yeah, mine's in economic crime investigation and technology. <laughs> <laughs> See, I, 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 there are a couple of things uh, I look at or back my look over my life and it's like, yeah, if I could do it again first, I'd like to be an NBA ref. Oh, yeah. They make a shitload of money for what they do, you know, but I don't think I, I'm I'm too tall to be an NBA ref. They're all like, you know, five yeah, foot eight. Yeah, I guess I never or, thought about that. That's hard, too. Oh, I don't yeah. know if you've ever ref. Oh, I, I've been refing since I was like 17 years old. Oh, yeah. So, you know. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's wild. I, I used to umpire and ref and like. You're never wrong. Never question yourself. You make a call. You stick to it. That was because I got recruited uh, when I was in high school to ref a game because the second high school ref didn't show up. So, and I knew all the refs cause I, you know, I was playing ball and they were refing us. And, and the one ref says, whatever call you make, never, ever change your mind. So yeah, don't, that's, don't move. Don't. Nothing. Yeah. I, yeah. And I always learned, you know, in basketball, you get five fouls, three are for the player and two are from the referee's mistakes. Yeah. A hundred percent. And that's, yeah, I, God, I wish I could play basketball again. I just <laughs> wait till you get to me, man. Oh, I got so much arthritis. Uh, my thing is like people take it too. Like I would uh, love to just play. Yeah, I don't want to yeah. get elbowed in the head. Yeah, I don't want to like. I don't have any competitiveness left in me, and yeah. it drives Jess nuts because she's like, <laughs> "You should race your dirt bike," and I'm like, "Nah, yeah. I don't." Homie, don't like, do that no more. I just don't care. Like yeah. I don't. I like competing against myself, and that's why I like skiing. Yeah, so much, exactly. Like, yeah challenges for myself than yeah. like the dirt bike we ride a lot of like hard enduro single track and like i just it's a puzzle like i know this bike can get up there yeah but how am i going to get it up there and can i take the harder route if i don't get it i like go back down so i'm still yeah. competitive but just with like i don't care about anything else any like i just yeah i don't have it anymore which is great yeah you just just live man just That's live it. do whatever yeah, so, office space hit me hard. The <laughs> office space theory is just like, yep, don't care. Don't. Yeah. Well, you know, I was lucky. I had this gigantic classroom that used to be a shop. And when the parents would walk into my classroom, they'd stand there and they'd look and they're like, man, you are a boy's teacher. I'd have a bicycle hanging from the ceiling. I had a skeleton of a klepper kayak. You know, all my, my sister, she, uh, she was the president of Simon and Schuster publishing in Canada. And, uh, so I had all these outdoor magazines that, you know, they put out and all this sort of stuff. And, yeah, the boys, I think, I hope they did well in my class. I always apologize to the girls. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah. I tried my best. <laughs> yeah. So, anyways, I'm going to wind this up, man. Thanks again for, uh, or for being the first, second, or returning guest on the Skippy Report. Absolutely. I'm yeah. happy. I'm always happy to talk. So I don't care what we talk about. I'm always <laughs> happy to, to ch which is funny because I'm literally doing it, you know, multiple times a week now. Yeah. I'm like, well, like, 
oh, I have another podcast today, but you're a guest, so that's cooler. But no, thanks for having me on. Yeah, it's no, fun to I can't wait to ski and... this uh, this winter with you. Maybe yeah, get Jonathan. Yeah, hopefully we can actually get across the border here. Oh yeah. Well, we were talking about that this morning in the hot tub with, and, and it's like, you know, people are why aren't why isn't the border open? And it's like yeah, well, you know what we we do this. I did the fast calculations. You know, America still has more than twice the daily cases that Canada has. Oh yeah, and you know it's 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 crazy. I still yeah. haven't gone to my cottage, and that's in Quebec. We're in this, you know the same country. It's not essential that I get there. It'll be there when it's all done. Right. Yeah. yeah but we we do our stuff around here, so we're sane. That's it. It's like being a tourist in your own town. Yeah. Take advantage of the things. I'd hate to be living in an apartment though. COVID it's, times. Yeah, or a van. Yeah. Ah, well, you can move your van. You get different scenery. <laughs> no, it's, it's all good. It's great. <laughs> all right. Well, you take it easy, man. Cool. Thanks and so Thanks much. again, Adam. No problem. All right. Later, man. Again, a huge thank you to Adam Sourwin for being my first repeat guest here on the Skipper Report. And uh, you can find him on uh, Instagram at Mr. Adam X. And uh, you should check him out and check out some of the... Uh, the web series from early in the career of The Pursuit. So thanks again for tuning in, and uh, check back in a few days for another episode of The Skippy Report.